The Space Infusimat IV set is a dedicated straight-line DEHP-free set. It utilizes a silicone pumping segment with clips on each end that secure to the pump and a green free-flow protection clip. The green clip is in the correct loading position upon removal from the packaging. Do not reposition it up or down the tubing. Close the roller clamp. Holding the bag horizontally makes spiking the IV bag easier. Use a twisting motion to insert the spike through the diaphragm. Keep the vent cap on the drip chamber closed throughout unless you are infusing from a glass bottle. Fill the drip chamber to two-thirds full. It is important not to twist or stretch the silicone segment. Slowly prime the tubing. When the fluid reaches the first injection site, stop the flow, invert the injection site, and gently tap it to remove any trapped air. Continue slowly priming and repeat at each injection site. Close the roller clamp once primed through to the distal end of the set. Do not reopen the clamp until the pump prompts you. It is imperative to load the IV set correctly. This is the only way to assure accuracy of flow and prevent free flow. Free flow protection is intended to prevent free flow during operation of the pump and when the IV set is removed from the pump. Therefore, there are two types of free flow protection on the Infusimat pump. Set-based protection engages when the tubing is removed from the pump. Pump-based protection is active once tubing is properly loaded. It is important to keep the roller clamp closed until the IV set is correctly loaded into the pump. The infusion pump will provide a brief prompt to open the roller clamp once the IV set is correctly loaded. Close the roller clamp anytime you open the door and manipulate the tubing while it is connected to a patient. The pump must be powered on to load the IV set. Press the power key on the front right-hand corner of the pump. The pump will perform a self-test and automatically open the door. The IV set must be properly loaded before the door will close and programming can occur. The IV set must be loaded from right to left. Locate the silicone segment. Hold the two-hole clip in your right hand and the white prong clip in your left hand. The two-hole clip should be aligned so that the O is at the top and a backwards D is at the bottom. Place the two-hole clip on the two pins on the right side of the pump. Insert the white pronged clip without twisting the IV set. Be sure not to stretch or twist the silicone segment. The printed stars on the silicone segment should be in a straight horizontal line once the two clips are in place. Next, take the green free flow protection clip, which provides the set-based protection, and with the hook facing down and toward you, insert it into the green slot on the left side of the pump. You will see three actions. The pump-based free flow protection lever moves up and locks into place, securing the IV set. Note the tubing is behind the lever. The safety clamp pinches the set. Depending upon the serial number of the pump, the safety clamp will be green or silver. The color difference has no impact on functionality. The blinking yellow triangle will stop blinking, indicating that the set base free flow protection clip is properly loaded. Do not close the door if the yellow triangle is still flashing. Thread the IV set into the notches on the right and left side of the pump. Run your finger along the IV set from the green free flow clip to the white pronged clip, pushing the IV set securely into the track with the sensor for air in line detection. Close the door by firmly placing pressure with both hands on each side of the pump door. Continue to press firmly until you hear and feel the motorized door latch pull the door shut. When you see Line Selection, Original Space Line, select OK. The pump will then go through a short calibration of the set with a series of display messages. If you miss the prompts, the pump displays Use Drug Library or Use Last Therapy. 
You may then proceed to open the roller clamp and begin programming. Some institutions may elect to enable the optional priming feature to prime the tubing through the pump. This feature is activated through hospital configuration settings. The pump will display a brief message advising you to disconnect patient prior to priming. The display will read, Prime line with X mils. The priming volume is set in the pump configuration. Press the up arrow for yes to prime the prompted amount. Now we will review the keypad. Directional arrows help navigate through programming screens. All screen prompts will have a corresponding arrow. Door open key. Universal power key for powering on, off, and standby. BOL key to program a bolus. C key will clear data on programming screens and function as a back key. Start-Stop key starts and stops infusions. Blue arrow key for biomedical and barcode scanning. OK key to confirm entries. Now let's review the information on the pump display. You will also receive a pocket guide explaining the symbols. The pump is infusing. The arrows move in the direction of infusion from right to left. End of infusion is programmed, indicating our infusion has a volume or time programmed. Here is the continuous infusion symbol. In the pressure setting area, the top line is the current infusion pressure. The bottom dashed line shows the pressure alarm setting, currently 5 out of 9, which is represented by five dashes. Pump is plugged into AC power. Battery status shows the battery level in thirds. Our pump shows two-thirds battery life. A fully charged battery runs for four hours at 100 mils per hour. Infusion is within the upper and lower soft limits. Drug name may be abbreviated while pump is running. Infusion rate or dose rate if a dose-based infusion is programmed. While the pump is running, the clinician can view other infusion status information, such as rate, drug concentration, volume remaining, and time remaining, displayed in the lower left portion of the display. Smart pumps got their name from the dose error reduction software developed to reduce the risk of medication errors. Commonly referred to as the drug library, it provides a safety net to help prevent medication errors. It is important to remember that dose error reduction software does not prevent all medication errors. We as nurses must be vigilant in assuring the five rights of medication administration by, amongst other things, ensuring the drug and concentration in the bag matches what is selected in the drug library. The pump will give a soft limit alert when program values exceed limits set in the drug library. You may respond by changing the dose or overriding the limit when it is appropriate for the patient's clinical condition. Hard limit alerts may not be overridden. The drug library also allows for customized clinical advisories with information relevant to the selected drug. The drug library has been customized by your institution to support your clinical practice. It has specific patient care areas, drugs, and concentrations. Now we will demonstrate drug library programming. The pump will prompt you to walk through the programming sequence. Follow the directional arrows to answer programming questions on screen. Use last therapy. Answering yes loads the last programmed entry. The drug name is detailed on the pump, in this case heparin. Answering no 
requires complete programming. We are going to answer no and program from the beginning. We are going to answer yes to use drug library. Drugs, concentrations, and limits have been customized for specific clinical areas. Find the desired care area by navigating with the up and down arrow keys. The screens always loop back to the top as we have done here. The screen will also provide arrow prompts to assist in directional arrow key programming. Select the highlighted care area by pressing the OK key or left arrow key. We are going to use the OK key for this training. We are going to select Critical Care and press OK. Drugs are listed alphabetically. Navigation is quick and easy in the drug library selection. We may navigate alphabetically with up or down arrows. Or we can navigate quickly by pressing left or right arrow keys to move quickly through alphabet groupings such as ABC, DEF, GHI, etc. We are going to stop on GHI since we are going to choose a drug library entry named IV Fluid. Press the down arrow key to IV Fluid. Press OK to select. Enter the VTBI, which is the volume to be infused and is typically the bag volume. Enter 1000 mils. Values are set by using right or left arrows to highlight the digit to be programmed. Press up down arrows to set value. Enter the rate programming screen by pressing the left arrow key or you may scroll down to enter the total time for the infusion. The pump calculates the value that is not entered, either rate or time. We are going to program a starting rate of 80 mils per hour. Note the pump shows the time for this infusion, 12 hours and 30 minutes. The soft limit indicator directly above the 80 shows that we are within the recommended soft limit for IV fluid. Press OK to confirm the entry. The main menu screen displays all entered values. Confirm and press the Start key to begin the infusion. Running arrows on the display and a green LED above the display indicate the pump is infusing. It is very easy to titrate while the pump is running. Note the left arrow symbol next to the rate or dose. By pressing the left arrow key, the rate programming screen is displayed. Increase the rate to 90 by using the arrow keys to change the rate, or press the C key to clear all values and reprogram the rate. Confirm by pressing the OK key to initiate the new rate. If you fail to confirm by pressing OK, the pump will provide a reminder alert in 30 seconds. The pump continues to infuse at the old rate until confirmed. When programming outside the limits, note the flashing limit indicator above the 150, indicating that we are outside the soft limit. Confirm with the OK key. The pump provides a soft limit alert. Note that the alert has the drug library limits shown in the upper left. Press the up arrow key to answer yes to override the soft alert and accept the rate of 150. Pressing No will return us to the Rate Programming screen. It is important to note that the rate displayed is not the original rate. It is the maximum rate within the soft limit. You may either accept this value, change the value, or press the C key two times. Pressing the C key initially clears the value. Pressing it again moves back to the previous rate. The pump display now indicates that the infusion is running outside the soft limits.
Now let's prepare a piggyback infusion by following these steps to hang the infusion. I've already spiked and manually primed my piggyback set. Hang the piggyback at least eight inches above the primary bag. Swab the upper injection site on the primary set and insert the piggyback set into the primary set injection site above the pump. Open the roller clamp on the piggyback IV set. If the piggyback infusion rate will be greater than 300 mils per hour, it is recommended to close the primary line slide clamp directly above the upper injection site. This will prevent sympathetic flow. Now let's program the piggyback infusion. Stop the primary infusion, which returns the display to the main menu. The main menu includes our rate, VTBI, and time, as well as special functions, options, and status. We will cover each of these during the training. For now, we're going to use up, down arrow keys to select special functions, because that is where piggyback mode is located. Select Piggyback Mode. Note, Piggyback Mode will not appear if the pump is not stopped. Answer Yes to Use Drug Library. Select the Care Area. Select the drug. Our piggyback drug is IVPB. Input the VTBI, 50 mils. Input either rate or time. We will demonstrate entering time, 30 minutes. Press OK. Then press the Start key. The Run screen display will indicate Piggy whenever the piggyback infusion is running. Once the piggyback mode has been activated, you may go back to the primary by pressing the Start Stop key. Select Change to Primary option then press the Start key. The Run screen will indicate PRIM when Primary is running. Now let's program a dose-based infusion through the drug library. Stop the current infusion. Press the C key to clear the settings and program a new therapy. We will select No to Use Last Therapy, Yes to Use Drug Library, select the Med Surge Care area, press the right arrow key to move to alphabet group GHI, select Heparin 25,000 units in 250 mils. With Heparin, we see a clinical advisory stating Verify Dose with Second Nurse. Clinical advisories include important information your institution wants clinicians aware of when administering this drug. Press the left arrow or OK key to confirm. Since heparin is set up in this library as a weight-based drug, the pump will prompt you to enter the weight. Enter a patient weight of 70 kilograms. Confirm by pressing OK. The pump now defaults to dose rate entry since heparin is a dose-based infusion. The library is preset with a default dose rate of 7 units per kilogram per hour. Your institution may choose to set a default dose for infusions that are routinely started at the same dose. Confirm that the ordered dose matches the default dose. If it does not, adjust the dose as required using the arrow keys. The VTBI was also preset at 250 mils in the drug library. Confirm the values displayed and start the infusion by pressing the Start key. Each drug within the drug library has the option of having the bolus feature enabled or disabled. In this case, heparin has been set up to be bolused. Let's program a bolus while the pump is running. Press the yellow bolus button. 
the pump defaults to bolus units set by the drug library, which is units per kilogram in this example. If the bolus ordered is in different units, you may change by pressing the down arrow key. When units are changed, the pump performs all the necessary calculations and applies limits as set in the drug library. For this example, we will stay at the default unit by pressing the C key to return to the previous bolus programming screen. Press the left arrow button and set the bolus amount by using arrow buttons. Enter 20 units per kilogram. Press the BOL button to start the bolus infusion at the maximum rate set by the drug library. In this case, the pump is running at 1200 mils per hour for the bolus. If the programmed bolus dose exceeds drug library limits, you will receive a dose alert. When the bolus is complete, the pump emits one beep. If the above steps are not completed after pressing the yellow BOL button, the pump reverts to the maintenance infusion. Now, we will program another bolus and add a defined time to the bolus infusion. First, press the yellow BOL button. Press the left arrow button and set the bolus amount by using arrow buttons. Enter 20 units per kilogram. Press OK to set bolus time. Clear the values and enter 2 minutes. Press the BOL button to start the bolus infusion. The rate is now running at 420 mils per hour to deliver the dose at 2 minutes. To cancel a bolus infusion, press OK or any key during the bolus infusion. Next, we'll review the three types of alarms on Infusimat space. Reminder alarms occur after incomplete programming or failure to confirm programming with a yellow visual alarm and audible alarm. Pre-alarms are based on time or volume remaining. These use audible signals and a yellow blinking light. The infusion is not stopped during a pre-alarm. All Infusimat space pumps have a battery nearly empty pre-alarm. The first pre-alarm is at 3 minutes. Institutions also have an option to configure three other pre-alarms. Volume to be infused, or VTBI, near end, time near end, and KVO active. Operating alarms stop the infusion and generate an audible alarm until the issue is addressed. In addition to the audible alarm, a red LED flashes and the display states alarm. The six operating alarms are VTBI infused, time expired, battery empty, KVO finished, pressure high, and air in line. There are two air in line alarms. The single bubble alarm occurs when a single bubble exceeds the value set in the pump configuration. The accumulated air alarm occurs when the total sum of air over a 15 minute sliding window exceeds the value set in the configuration menu. Either alarm resets the air in line detector for the individual alarm. Pressing the C button while the pump is running returns the display to the main menu. Access the status menu with the up or down arrow keys. The status menu may display infusion totals, battery capacity, software version, and drug information. Displayed information is determined by your institution's pump configuration, so your settings may be different. In the status menu screen, the pump displays intermediate volumes, also known as the interim volumes, amount, and time values. The intermediate or interim volume, amount, and time are counted up until the user clears the totals or the therapy is changed by the user answering no to use last therapy. Therefore, if one pump is used for several different drugs during the course of your shift, it is important to note and record the totals prior to changing the drug. We will clear intermediate values by pressing the left arrow key. 
answer yes to reset all to clear all intermediate parameters. Primary and piggyback infusions are totaled separately. You must access the status menu while in primary mode to clear and or view primary infusion totals. You must access the status menu while in piggyback mode to view and or clear piggyback infusion totals. Scrolling down further shows battery capacity, which displays expected remaining battery time to the minute based on the current infusion rate. The battery life is 4 hours at 100 mils per hour. The battery takes 6 hours to recharge when fully depleted. Next, the current pump software version is displayed. Finally, Drug Info displays current drug name, drug library name, and drug library creation date. Now let's review the options menu. Pressure sets the pump's downstream pressure setting. Choose between nine preset pressure levels, one lowest to nine highest by pressing the left right arrow buttons and confirm the selection with OK. The menu display will indicate the value in millimeters of mercury of each pressure level. Pressure settings are retained during therapy changes or power cycles until reset again. Data Lock There are two lock levels, Level 1 and Level 2. In Lock Level 1, all programming keys are locked. However, it is possible to make a set change. In Lock Level 2, all programming keys are locked and you cannot perform a set change. Setting data lock levels is covered in more detail in the Advanced Functions section. Contrast, Display Light, and Keypad Light. These can be adjusted individually according to the lighting conditions. Alarm Volume. Choose between nine different volume levels. Macro Mode. Increases the numeric font size and eliminates the infusion status display on the lower left corner. The pump can be placed in standby mode rather than powering off so that restarting an infusion is quicker. Press the Start Stop button to interrupt the infusion. Close the roller clamp. Press and hold the power key for three seconds with the tubing still in place. The pump will go into standby. The default time for standby is displayed. Standby time can be changed by pressing the left arrow key and adjusting time as needed. Confirm by pressing OK. The pump can be placed into standby mode from 1 minute to 24 hours. While the pump is in standby mode, the display shows the remaining time and the full name of the drug that is programmed. Exit standby by pressing the C key and resume the infusion by pressing Start. Press the Start Stop button to stop infusion. The green LED will go off. Close the roller clamp. Press Door Open key and confirm with Yes. The door will partially open. Pull the door completely open. You will feel slight resistance as the door pulls the free flow protection clip to clamp off the tubing. Press the green opening lever on the inside left to release the green free flow protection clip. Remove the IV set from right to left. Push the door up until the pump grabs the door and closes it completely. To turn the pump off, you must hold the power key in for three seconds. This feature prevents an inadvertent powering down of the pump. <laughs>